Hey, what's up, everybody? Time for some Game of Thrones, uh, episode two of season seven. A pretty good episode all around. Uh, uh, it, some uh, s shocking uh, events take place, and uh, we get to see that uh, there possibly might be some uh, good to come out of a uh, Jon Snow and uh, Daenerys uh, meeting, uh, hopefully. Uh, there's no more backstabbing for a while, and Buddy uh, leaving Littlefinger up there with Sansa in the north. Uh, I don't know if that was the brightest move, but uh, necessity uh, dictates that you take a risk, I guess. So yeah, let's uh, get started. All right, episode starts off uh, stormy night over at Dragonstone, and um, Daenerys is given. Varys or Varys, I don't know, I guess how you de depend on it, um, giving him the, uh, you know, interrogation <clears throat> and, uh, questioning about his loyalty, which is pretty smart since, uh, he and, uh, Littlefinger are both kind of the, the, not, I don't know, the master or one of the, or the more, uh, skilled, uh, chess players when it comes to the political chess board, though, uh, Tyrion, um, is, a uh, no slouch, that's for certain. Kind of the uh, voice of reason for uh, Daenerys' uh, ambition, <laughs> kind of balance it out because she just kind of is kind of a zealot, which is why I don't really care too much for her character. Um, but uh, she does at least seem to have uh, wisened up a bit about a lot of the uh, the BS. You know, she realizes that uh, they're not uh, exactly. Um, you know, waiting for her and, uh, you know, secret toast to her health and, you know, and all that. So kind of a the Seven Kingdoms is kind of a bit uh, of a clusterfuck, if, if you pardon my French. So, uh, yeah, there's still quite a bit uh, to uh, be decided. And uh, Cersei sure as hell ain't going to give up without a fight, that's for certain. And the uh, Lady Melisandre comes down. Uh, to, uh, she was pretty much banished from uh, up at the uh, Night's Watch uh, for uh, her uh, sacrifices, needless to say, and ultimately the uh, end of Stannis Baratheon. So, and we all saw what she really looks like when she has glamour is off. She's <laughs> not a pretty sight, but she seems to at least. Uh, not be, be more of a, I guess, a uh, faith based, uh, driven um, by her uh, religion. So, I mean, it's it's not, uh, doesn't seem to be uh, too, too much, uh, you know, political conspiring and, and uh, type of stuff like, you know, like a little finger would uh, do. She's just kind of driven by her own belief system. So, she still believes the, the you know, Jon Snow is the the one that's going to bring the the dawn um, and uh, the uh, da Daenerys can uh, come to an agreement and uh, join forces all the better since she's uh, well aware of the uh, activity going on north of the wall so she fills them in on a, a little bit and uh, of course, Tyrion uh, always got along pretty well with Jon, so uh, he uh, gives him uh, his uh, thumbs up, two thumbs up of approval as far as his character goes. So now Daenerys is at least intrigued a bit. So that is the start of possible uh, political alliance. We'll have to see. However, uh, I don't know about uh, bending the knee uh, to Daenerys. Uh, I think uh, she need these. The big uh, issue, I think, with <laughs> a lot of these leaders is they don't quite realize that you can, like I said, this one, the central, you know, government over, that's supposed to rule over the whole, that, of a, a land that freaking big. I mean, Westeros is massive, um, given its population. Um, if you ever you look online, you can look up some of the details about it. I mean, it's very sparsely populated. And a lot of, and a lot of the populations are probably exaggerated in the book, at least if when people kind of break it down and you know and uh, put some uh, logic behind it, but you know doesn't really 
ruin the story. But uh, yeah, I mean, how I would think splitting the kingdom in half would pr- and uh, leaving the North alone to do their what they've always done since uh, they've never really been uh, the ones to uh, kind of join in that all that political uh, intrigue. I guess you could say that they enjoy in the South. Uh, yeah, I might want to split it in half and uh, worry about uh, w- governing over small territories, especially since in the north there's just it's just a lot of land and not a lot of people. So uh, you better focus on the you know the King's Landing and Dorne and all that. Be a probably a better idea, you know. And uniting the seven kingdoms it doesn't seem to work out too well. Yeah, a little uh, segue up north, uh, the raven uh, delivered the note to John, and of course uh, Davos, who's uh, probably one of my favorite characters in the show, and uh, Sansa are uh, not uh, too thrilled at the notion of uh, him going down there, um, especially, I don't know, where would they, if they would rendezvous somewhere in between, because it's qu- quite a long ways, uh, down to Dragonstone from where <laughs> they're at right now. And, uh, you know, who knows what other military forces are out and about. We know that uh, Euron Greyjoy is uh, prowling about uh, uh, to uh, make good on his promise to Cersei. So, uh, yeah, they advise against it. But, you know, John, he's uh, like, his, you know, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll play, uh, uh, you know, I guess uh, what you call a what if and uh, or assume that... Uh, John uh, or uh, Ned Stark is John's actual father, um, which of course pre- previous episodes and fan theories have uh, suggested otherwise. Uh, he's quite a bit like him in in the way, so uh, it's pretty much a, a given that he he wasn't gonna take this lightly and uh, you know and hang around up in the north until uh, things got hot and heavy. So Cersei sits on her throne, acting like a queen. Or trying to act like a queen. She's just a crazy old crazy bitch, <laughs> basically, at this point. And uh, I don't know what her end game is, uh, other than she's just slowly descending into madness herself, since she's basically lost everything. I mean, Jamie's the only one there on Earth that she probably uh, wouldn't uh, sentence to death for uh, crossing her. Uh, but uh, Jamie has to uh, t- talk to uh, Samuel's father, um, who's, uh, according to the books and from what I've read, is a you know, hell of a military mind and uh, whatnot. So definitely a valuable ally in uh, times of war to try to get him on, uh, on the side of the Lannisters. And, uh, you know, especially uh, since uh, they're facing a... Qu- a large cavalry with the Dothraki, and then you've got ships and a combined, and then of course dragons, which is a whole different thing. Uh, so yeah, definitely an ally doesn't want to piss off. Um, of course, ty- the House Tyrell, yeah, they're uh, not exactly uh, friends of the Lannisters any longer. That bur- uh, bridge was burned in that uh, wildfire, needless to say. And speaking of Tarleys or Samwell. And, uh, Mr. Mormont, the, uh, unfortunate victim of that, uh, apparently incurable disease, which I like, I think was actually, should be called fre- the friend-zoned, uh, friend-zone-itis. He, <laughs> he was put in the friend-zone by Daenerys, and, uh, subsequently, uh, oh, this, uh, infection of th- came over him, so I think it's a bit of karma, He's, Pining for Danny, but uh, she kept him in the friend zone. Poor guy. Uh, loyalty sometimes gets you nowhere. And uh, of course, Samuel, being the kind-hearted person that he is, wants to uh, try to you know cure him or at least uh, give it a shot. But uh, of course, it's been forbidden, and uh, that's that, according to uh, his uh, superior. So, uh, Cersei's got to deal with some dragons, and, uh, Maester Kyburn, of course, is her, uh, henchman of sorts, kind of a mad, 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 mad scientist, uh, type mind, uh, hell-bent on helping her, uh, and, uh, if you read up on some of the backstory, 
and I'm sure it's in, in the book, but, you know, um, they mention, you know, some the invasion of Aegon the Conqueror and, and uh, also how the dragons were dealt with. And it was kind of like, uh, you know, anti-air siege craft type equipment like that uh, giant uh, crossbow device uh, that uh, is down there. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of hinted at. And that's basically all you really can do is, you know, because like I said, they're not like Smaug in... Uh, you know, or Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit, where, uh, you know, it's pretty much underneath his body, his belly and everything. Chest is like, almost like it was encrusted with like, I don't know if it was jewels or if it was just part of his skin or if it was because, you know, actually encrusted with a substance that, you know, basically is impenetrable. And of course, we know that, that one little scale was missing and that was kind of as a, a Smaug's Achilles heel. But these dragons are uh, not as uh, durable, I guess, in a sense, as far as... Uh, wounds and being pierced with things and you know so flying up and down their torsos and everything are exposed so yeah g giant ass crossbows anything like an any kind of netting or um you know anything that can because as long as if you can bring them to the ground um yeah you know and uh they kind of lose their advantage even if they can breathe fire so Yep, not surprising that they were working on anti-aircraft uh, equipment <laughs> so to speak now some more, a war council with uh, uh, Dorne's representative, uh, and also the Queen of Thorns, uh, who, uh, Diana Rigg, I, I always liked her um, as a uh, an actress in a lot of the, uh, kind of the uh, murder mystery, British murder mysteries and those type of shows, you know, I remember watching, I remember when she... Uh, uh, God, what was it? She used to host a show. I think it was usually on PBS. It was uh, like a murder mystery show um, where she was the host of it. And this is probably back in the 80s, maybe in the 90s. So I always liked her. But uh, the Queen of Thorns, I can, you know, she her, her, you know, wit and not giving a damn about <laughs> anything and not, not, not easy. You can't really flatter her or uh, pull smoke up her ass, but... Uh, I think it's, she's also been pushed to the edge at this point. Um, so, uh, yeah, she'll give some good counsel, but, you know, she's also a schemer and ultimately is just, is, you know, looking out for the, her family as far as their, uh, legacy and, uh, live, you know, the ability to continue the name on in the future. So she'd probably stab the, you know, dra or queen of dragons in the back if uh, she had a chance. That I can guarantee you. So yeah, I get I, after a while she gets a little bit <laughs> gets a little bit more annoying than charming. Yeah, Illyria Sand on the other hand, you know I I like Oberon was cool. You know his whole uh, duel with the uh, mountain and uh, you know his kind of his backstory uh, made him a pretty cool character and kind of sucked. You know that he ended, but I think most people were rooting for him uh, to win that uh, duel. But, uh, yeah, she, I, I don't know, um, the <clears throat> Dornish characters in the books, I would say, I, I find them more interesting than how they're portrayed on the, uh, television show. Uh, her character, you know, is kind of meh, I don't really care too much, uh, kind of just more of those fiery, you know, <clears throat> almost Southern European types, you know, on the, you know, or I guess, you know, have that, uh kind of, uh, you know, kind of reputation, you know, kind of like the Italian women have, or Spanish women, you know, have for being feisty and fiery. Uh, ven very vindictive and, you know, or at least uh, quick to want revenge. You know, she's not the most uh, calm. She's definitely not anything like Tyrion as far as, she's, uh, as, far as her. Uh, when something happens, like Oberon's death, she's pretty much hell-bent hell on... Uh, taking care of business and getting revenge so yeah she's all right i just didn't find her, i don't really find her character all that interesting overall or the sand snakes to be honest with you so long story short uh the tyrell and dornish armies are going to attack king's landing and the fleet uh is going are going to take the unsullied and I don't know if the Dirac dothraki as well or if the Dirac dothraki are just going to hang out um up to uh the seat of the Lannisters, uh, Castle Rock, which from where, from, uh, 
Taiwan is, uh, there's no gold. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, what was the Iron Bank, I think. They're in, uh, owe them some serious change, that's for certain. But they're going to take over, uh, the, uh, the rightful home, or at least the ancestral home of the uh, Lannisters. So, uh, possibly, I don't know what all, uh, as far as, uh, troops or anything, or if it's just, you know, family there, if they're going to just wipe them out and basically deliver a moral blow and also uh that would also erase uh, any or at least pre prevent uh, any uh you know retreat to a location where you know they'd be familiar with um, being their home of course so they can overtake uh, the lannisters uh fortress or whatever at castle rock and and uh, secure that and then that's pretty much got cersei pinned at king's landing unless she wants to <laughs> travel across the the seas uh over to some other foreign foreign land which i doubt uh so yeah they're not going to just uh bum rush the city and uh you know and, and hope for the best because they're trying not to massacre the place because uh conquer a conqueror that comes in and just lays waste to everything uh doesn't exactly leave uh, a very good impression on those that they're supposed to try to win over so Tyrion again being the uh, voice of reason, but you know we'll have to see if uh, his plans work. So uh, Grey Worm and his gal get get it on. I didn't know if I mean, it seems like he was going down. He was he was going to go whistle through the wheat field or uh, you know go head down south because I don't know if his uh, his uh, gear is functioning properly, but I guess he uh, can at least feel a, an emotional connection. So, good for him, sending her brave man off to battle with a little, uh, you know, a little affection. Uh, nice scene, of course, you know, they have to throw TNA in, uh, in the show, of course, because, you know, otherwise, why be on HBO unless you're going to show, go you know, smut and, and gore porn. So, anyway, just typical for Game of Thrones. So Sam, well, uh, being the kind-hearted, good-natured person he is, uh, decides he's going to help Bo Mormont out uh, and give him a, you know, it's like a, taking him to the uh, to the spa for a skin exfoliation of a, an extreme sort. Pretty brutal. Taking that, that gray scale off. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I hope uh, that uh, he manages to you know, cure him, I, you know, I'd be, you know, like the typical, well, uh, you know, Sam, you disobeyed and you, you know, did something that was completely forbidden and you're, you know, we're throwing your ass out and see, you know, you're never going to be a maester. And then, you know, Mormont uh, actually recovers and, uh, you know, all is forgiven. You know, if that's how it wound up, that'd be cool. Cause now well, this character, I mean, it's, I mean, it would be nice. I, like I said, I'm not a typically, you know, big fan of him, but, uh, I mean, he's definitely, you know, at his, uh, his, lo his, you know, duty and his loyalty, uh, or, you know, to, uh, serve his, you know, this Khaleesi, at least, you know, it'd be nice if it was rewarded in some way, even if he ends up, you know, being an, uh, someone to sacrifice himself to, for, you know, to make a impact later on when it matters. But yeah, I'm hoping that, uh, this operation works. And of course I don't want Sam to get grayscale either. That would just, that would suck. That would that'd be pretty crappy writing, I think. All right, so Arya, uh, aka Ari, uh, <laughs> this, at the end that a uh, hot pie or a friend who seems like he's eating one pie for every one he bakes. It looks like he's put on a few pounds, but uh, yeah, never trust a skinny chef, they say. Uh, old friends meeting up since uh, Arya definitely is. Uh, her friends have been few and far between. Um, you know, her journey's been kind of a lonely one overall, so uh, she's kind of, it's toughened her up a bit, I get, I guess, uh, but he uh, does give her some good news um, that uh, the Boltons are no more, and uh, I think it's kind of funny that um, Hot Pie mentioned it as being the Battle of the Bastards. Uh, it, I almost, that, that don't, it, it felt like almost like a uh, breaking the fourth wall, because I, you know... It seems like it'd be kind of silly if they they called it that uh, in Westeros. You know, it seems like I don't know. It just seemed out of place. It's almost like he was a 
a fan reading off a, a you know, oh, the did you hear about the Battle of the Bastards on Game of Thrones last week? I don't know. It just seemed kind of like out of place. Anyway, insignificant. So she finds out that uh, John is the king in the north, and uh, Winterfell is back in the hands of the Starks. So uh, she decides that she, uh, she's not going to go after Cersei after all. So good. I'm 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 glad that they uh, decided to take it that way and not have her just go off alone on her continued journey. It'd be nice to have some, uh, you know, some a, a family reunion of those that are left uh, among the Starks or the. Starks in name, um, since I don't know, Jon Snow, I guess, hasn't uh, accept, hasn't been uh, given the uh, t official name of Stark. So, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, that's cool. I'm glad that she's going back and uh, we'll be able to see her up there north with her family. It makes makes it uh, worthwhile. She she re had got her revenge against the phrase, and and of course, the Boltons are dead. That's another part of the cons. Conspiracy, and of course, yeah, the Lannisters played a part. But uh, yeah, I'm glad that I'm glad that they went with that instead of just having her continue down to King's Landing. All right, so uh, John breaks the news to all of his uh, loyal retainers and uh, bannermen about what the situation is. Uh, everyone gets their two cents in. Uh, Sansa, of course, uh, reminding him that uh, Targaryens uh, didn't haven't treated their family. Very well, at least uh, in recent memory. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, the John has seen <laughs> the Knights King. He's seen, uh, yeah, he's killed. You know, there the couple of the, uh, or at least, well, yeah, one of the, uh, you know, more of the head honchos uh, of that of their uh, group, not just merely the the uh kind of the zombified you know non-thinking one uh members of the army so the, the lieutenants i guess of the knight's king so uh yeah he knows what the stakes are uh, these guys down here are not uh going to uh get it until they see these beings in in the flesh <laughs> so yeah uh not surprising and not surprising that john uh, trusts sansa but um the whole scene with uh uh, little finger in the in the catacombs. Um, yeah, John, of course, being John and protective of his family. I think he, uh, with that, uh, I mean, Peter, Peter Baelish, a little finger, it was pretty stupid to uh, be upfront and honest with uh, John about his feelings for Sansa. <laughs> that was a that that was a blunder on his part, and I don't think he. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking, to be honest, because I would I would have kept that from John. Um, apparently, he doesn't. I mean, you think you know John by reputation, if you remembered Ned at, at all, how he would have Ned would have probably reacted the same way. So yeah, I don't know what he was thinking. Um, maybe he thought. I mean, in his mind, he was calculating possibly that John felt like that he John was like that John was in his debt because of saving him. But John's you know pretty much like you know yeah okay cool thanks. Uh, now I got other stuff to do. So, as you know, coming to a another an ally's aid, you know, doesn't deserve uh, you know a uh, ticker tape parade and a you know pat on the back and a whatnot. Uh, it's kind of, when you're in times of war, <laughs> it's kind of expected that you know they they band together. Even though I don't, I mean, especially since Cat uh, and Liza were you know sisters and and what what uh, Ned and Robert what at the were. Uh, raised at the I the Irie or uh spent time there under John Aaron so there's a connection a familial connection a political connection so it's not uh, surprising plus Sansa but so yeah John uh, basically you know you touch her I'm going to kill you and that was probably not the best on John's part but it's being John so I think Littlefinger at least from what I just saw in that scene I think he may he feeling he's probably backed into a corner and he may uh push his uh agenda towards his end game you know he might r ramp it up the speed in which it's put into action um i if i was john i would have told um brian to uh basically say you know don't trust this guy and make sure my sister's protected at all times from this creep 
Um, cause yeah, that's no, no good can come from little finger. I, I, I actually think little finger is going to die, a, you know, somewhat of a kind of a tragic death of sorts. I think he's another one that's going to get back too far into a corner and is going to, you know, uncharacteristically lose his cool and, uh, you know, meet with a kind of a tragic, violent end. That's just my prediction, but, uh, we'll have to see. So John leaves, yeah, of course, leaves with uh, Sansa in charge, which is fine because she's a, you know, full-blooded Stark. Uh, she's shown that she's, uh, you know, capable of diplomacy and, and at least, or at least having a political mind. Um, she's been around enough people to learn kind of <laughs> what the game of Thrones is from, from uh, living in uh, King's Landing and dealing with Lannisters for several years. So, uh Oh, I think she, and she, plus she seems to be kind of, I don't know, kind of, I think underneath it all, I think she's even using Littlefinger in a way, you know, it's almost like she's trying, she, she can use her uh, charms on him and, uh, you know, kind of get, get him, him wrapped around her uh, finger and uh, play him for that. And I think, you know, who knows, maybe that even ends up being how he dies from, you know, she eventually, you know, turn on him or something completely. I don't know, but yeah, I don't, we'll have to see, uh, if these decisions pan out, of course, got to take risks. Like I said, that giant army is on ice zombies is c coming down, uh, from the North. And, uh, if they've got that, what that horn or whatever, uh, if they, that, I think that'll be badass if they, if they do have the wall, this co completely collapse, you know, from, uh, you know, magic, you know, item. That would be pretty sweet. That'd be a holy crap moment. We'll have to see. And next scene, we get kind of a little bittersweet moment. Uh, Arya is uh, camped out and her horse starts to uh, become a little unsettled and a pack of wolves arrives and lo and behold, who is the leader of the pack? Uh, Arya's dire wolf, Nymeria. So that's pretty cool because remember she uh, basically chased her off, and I think in the book she was having, I don't know, they were ha having like visions of like she was, I don't know, skin, you know, uh, what they call it, warging or something like that, um, where the Stark kids at least, uh, you know, like kind of in the mind or in the body of the of their dire wolf running around. So yeah, unfortunately she had to, you know, Arya, not kind of the uh, awkward one, you know, has a close friend in a dire wolf and then has to chase her off so she won't be killed because it remember it attacked Joffrey. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of sad that uh, the dire wolf didn't come with her. Who knows? Maybe that Nymeria will have, you know, she'll, Arya will be in trouble and then Nymeria will come in and save the day and then they'll go back up north together. But I mean, Nymeria is a wild animal, a wolf. She's got a pack, it looks like, of her own. So she's kind of in her element. Um, at least, uh, you know, there's recognition between the two of them. So that was, yeah, kind of bittersweet. And uh, yeah, so that leads us to, looks like the uh, last episode, or last uh, part of this uh, episode uh, review. And that is a bit of a shocker. Uh, but I guess the, this show is not uh, short on shocks, that's for certain. Uh, Yara, or I think it's Asha in the book, and uh, Ilya, Ilar I mean, Ilaria Sander diking it out of surprise, surprise. Um, like I said, more uh, more HBO n loveliness, I guess. You know, I'm, I'm too old to get <laughs> excited by that kind of stuff. It's kind of like, meh. And, of course, Theon, of course, we've got to be con constantly reminded that he's been... You know, emasculated, and uh, yeah, but lo and behold, the uh, the uncle arrives. Well, Euron Greyjoy and his f guys come in and lay waste to uh, the ships of you know that they're sailing down to Dorne. Uh, uh, lay waste to the Team Bad Pussy, the Sand Snakes. They are toast, and uh, not quite sure if. Uh, Yara, she might have been taken captive, but Theon, of course, like I said, Theon, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I think it, it, it's kind of mixed feelings about how his decision, but it makes sense. I mean, he's been, he has been psychologically, you know, beat down, um, and, uh, you know, tortured and everything, and so it would have been kind of dumb. I mean, what was he gonna, you know, run forward and charge in and then, you know, die saving his sister, you know, heroically and, oh, the you know, Theon, you've uh, redeemed yourself. Now, I, th I think it was a nice twist that he, uh, 
you know, just uh, jumped off the ship and got the hell out of there. You know, he's, you know, still a coward. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a nicer twist than just kind of going with what the obvious would be, you know, or, you know, where Euron gets defeated and, you know, everything's back to normal. Cause that really, this really throws, you know, a, uh, you know, a monkey wrench into the whole, uh, situation. Um, so yeah, it's not a bad way to end it. Pretty cool. Uh, tack some pretty good, uh, you know sword fighting Hollywood style and entertaining some blood and guts uh, so yeah good way to end it yeah all right and uh, that speaking of which that's the uh, end of the review and commentary uh, a little long one but I like to at least uh, go in a little in depth on my opinions and stuff and not just give you a you know a re repeat of, of the obvious uh, yeah so that's it uh, I'll come back I'll be back with uh, episode three one after I get a chance to watch it. Uh, just to let you guys know, I do have a Patreon account now, uh, so I'll link that in the description. Um, I would love to have uh, all comments, uh, you know, that you have. Uh, post them down below uh, so I can improve on these videos and do better um, into the future. And uh, so, yeah, don't hesitate to uh, give me some uh, constructive criticism. I'd always appreciate it. Till next time, everybody, take it easy.